So I have to be a glutton for punishment or just very cheap, but I bought the cheapest bore gauge on Amazon, and when I say cheap, it's cheap. $15 for what's in this box. In case you are not familiar what a bore gauge is, which I'm sure if you watch this channel you probably are, but just in case, it measures bore diameter. I have always used snap gauges to do that, or telescopic gauges, however you want to call them. This sort of set, which most everyone probably has. And for getting a general measurement of a bore or a cylinder, they, they work fine. But I wanted something maybe a little bit more accurate and maybe a little bit more repeatable for a specific job that I have coming up, which is boring out this cylinder. And yes, I've talked about this in a couple videos and I'm getting there. I'm trying to set the tooling up and make sure that this is gonna actually work before I do it. And one of those things about setting the tooling up is getting uh, the, uh, the right tool for the job, shall we say. This is a 35 to 50 millimeter bore gauge and it comes with a 0.01 millimeter dial indicator that is three millimeters overall travel. It comes with the body of the thing and uh, a couple different anvils for different lengths. I already have the one I need in there, which is, uh, this bore is 38 millimeter, which we're gonna be measuring. I've already been messing with this a little bit and right out of the box, it needed work. The micrometer head, for lack of a better term, was actually stuck. Uh, in the reviews, you will see that a couple people had the same problem, and I think I understand what the problem is. And it was an easy fix, but still, it's kind of uh, crappy when you buy a tool and you have to do major surgery on it before you even use it. Let's put it together here. We're gonna take out this little cap that's in here. This is just a cap to keep debris out. Stick our indicator head in. Till it moves. So the total travel of this of the micrometer head, which is what I'm pressing down here, is approximately a millimeter and three tenths. Maybe a little bit more, depending on how you how hard you squeeze it. The dial indicator is actually pretty smooth. It's pretty good. It does have a rotating bezel, so you can line it up. It's um it's it's pretty nice. I I, I can't. I can't fault that. I'm gonna get into the dirty part here in a minute, but the actual build and quality of the dial indicator itself, eh, it, a point could be made that that's worth $15 on its own, and you're getting the rest of it free, which, honestly, maybe they should give the rest of it away free. So just like telescoping gauges, a bore gauge is an indirect reading instrument. And all that means is that what you read on here is not the measurement. It is a reference to the measurement, but it is not the measurement. You actually have to set the gauge up to read what you want it to read. So I set the indicator into the bore gauge and I've preloaded it by one millimeter. I've got my micrometer here. It is set to 38 millimeter, which is what I believe this bore is gonna be. It's gonna be close to 38 millimeters. I'm gonna put it in this pan of ice because it's the closest thing I have to a micrometer stand. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calibrate the bore gauge to 38 millimeters. And all that means is I'm gonna put it in here and we're gonna find the smallest setting. You see the needle moving move there. See it reverses itself. That's the smallest setting down there right near the bottom. I'll go ahead and rotate the dial to get it close to, I'm gonna put the zero at where I think the needle's gonna end up. I had it off a little bit the first time. Okay, so, right about there. A little fidgety getting this, you know, keeping the center, you kinda of need three hands to do this. So just kinda of move the gauge till the needle finds its bottom, which is right there. It's almost straight down. Okay, so we got our zero set. So now, we know that when this indicator is at zero, that will read 38 millimeters. Short of the zero, that means it's larger, and if it's past the zero, that means it's smaller than 38 millimeter. Let's go ahead and put it in the bore and see what we get. It is basically self-centering because it's a three point of contact. It has the anvil head and the two wheels. So we'll get it in there. 
to press the plunger a little bit, get it in there, and then we can kind of read it. All right, so we know that the zero down at the bottom there is going to be our 38 millimeters, and we see that as I rotate it in here, the highest point is actually a tenth of a millimeter before the zero, which is a tenth of a millimeter bigger. So I know that this bore is now 38.1 millimeters. That's the point where the needle reverses itself. You see the needle goes this way as I rock it, stops and then comes back and reverses itself. So I know that that is the smallest point and that is approximately 38.1, 38.11 millimeter maybe. Probably 38.11. So I know that this bore is a little bit oversized and that's you know, it's an old bore. It's it's wouldn't surprise me if it is a little oversized. Not a problem for what we're going to be doing to it because we are going to go six tenths over. So we have uh, you know five tenths to work with. Basically, we have half a millimeter to work with. Let's check. Let's check how accurate this thing is as we move the micrometer. So I'm going to try to hold this in the micrometer. Sorry guys, this is really fiddly to do on on camera. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked out my last fiddly bits, please do it got kind of popular. Just a shameless plug for another video in the middle of this one. Okay, and I'll put a link in the description. And I did have my dial off just a hair. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to move the micrometer out to, let's say, let's go to 39 millimeters. 39 millimeters. So we should be basically back at the zero, and we are. It's basically back at the zero. So not bad. Dial indicator is is pretty well, is pretty calibrated. You know, as calibrated as we need to go. We're not going down into microns here. What is 0.01? That's 10 microns, right? We're down in the 10 micron range, which is an order of magnitude more than one micron. So pretty pleased with that. It it seems seems to work pretty well. It's It's repeatable, but again, there's some issues with the head, and let me show you that. So, I mentioned that it was stuck when I got it, and it was. First thing I noticed is that the, the needle here would not move. It was stuck in place. The guide wheels, for lack of a better term, also move. So the first thing I did, because I had already read the reviews that theirs was that other people had this issue, I went ahead and took it apart. And I did notice that thread engagement is the threads engage, but there's not a lot of thread engagement in there between these threads and this thread. So you kind of got to be careful when you put it on, take the, the arm off and on, and not tighten too much because the thread engagement is iffy. You know, I almost wonder after playing with this for a minute if, if this is like a second, if this was uh, rejected by some other company because, the, you know, they sell this same sort of body. Uh, very, very similar in several different kits, including name brand kits, if you will. Um, Anytime Tools sells one, and Fowler even sells one uh, uh, very close to this. As far as looks wise, what it looks like you're getting is, is very close to this. So we have a rod inside, and that rod actuates the, the uh, dial indicator. We have our anvil here. It's held in by a locking nut. Threading on them is leaves a lot to be desired. You can see here we already have a little bit of what what appears to be some rust or corrosion on the on the body, and you can kind of tell those threads are are not the greatest thing in the world. So the next thing we'll do is we'll take out the actual plunger piece. And that's just a little, little plunger, spring, and a little clip to hold it together. And this is what was jammed. And the reason that it was jammed is because, let me see if I can get in there. I think you can just see there's a little lever down in there. And apparently when they put this together, they just sort of... Well, this piece goes on this piece, so we'll just screw this in. Well, yeah, that's fine, except for 
you have to make sure that that little lever that's down in there, which you can't barely see, you can't hardly see, you have to make sure that that lever is in the right position when you put it together, otherwise it doesn't actuate this arm because you've jammed it up. And you can see that as I push that lever down, it pushes the arm up. Well, what they did was they pushed the lever all the way up, which means that this piece was actually under the lever instead of on, on the lever, and was not, uh, obviously was not engaging. It was just locking itself up. So if we get the lever in the right place, and then we put this piece in, There we go. And then we can see that it works correctly. If the lever is all the way up and you put this piece in, you'll notice that the tab is sticking out or the nipple sticking out, but it don't move. And this is how it was when I got it. It was just kind of locked up like this. Now this piece will move, but there's nothing to push on it because you've locked the lever up. So be aware of that if you got if you buy one of these that when you get it, you're probably going to have to do a little surgery on it. And basically, it's just about getting a pick in there, pushing that lever all the way down. There's really hardly any way to show you that, but pushing that lever all the way down, and then resetting your piece in. and then that should do the work. So we get that in there, put our spring on, I just threw across the room, and put our body back together carefully, very carefully, so as not to cross-thread the body. The anvil is kind of higgledy-piggledy, uh, you know, to use technical terms you kinda gotta put it in it's a little bit trial and error as to how far you want this want it to stick out for whatever you're measuring got to put the other piece on that's some kind of an important piece but actually while I have it apart let me show you something see right there where that pin is do you see that hand work apparently that pin was hanging up on the body of the thing hanging up on this piece you can actually see in this piece where it's sort of galled a little bit. That's pretty rough as guts right there for a precision instrument. It's easy to assemble it incorrectly and it really doesn't inspire a lot of confidence when it comes from the factory assembled incorrectly, but it is what it is. So I think in the thumbnail I'm, I put uh, it's bad but it's also good and and that's I mean that's the truth. Uh, it actually works fairly well after you get it set up it does the job it's meant to do. It's certainly more more easily repeatable. I don't want to say it's more repeatable because that's just a matter of using these as a matter of uh, a learned skill. So you can get very repeatable with a, with a snap gauge, but uh, it is definitely easier, faster to get repeatable measurements with this because of the three-point contact. Uh, you're always basically going to be in the center of whatever bore you're you're using. For $15, I'm I'm actually I hate to say it, but because you know it's one of those tools that's kind of right on the edge of of being junk, but it actually works fairly well. 